Hello everybody, this is Rob Redman at 3D World and welcome to this video uh, which is going to be quite short um, but it's just going to show you how quick and simple it is to set up an animated object, something like a tree branch for example or some kind of a tentacle or dendrite, something like that. Um, so let's jump straight in and the first thing I'm going to do is add the profile which is going to be a circle for me and I'm just going to go into the attributes manager and change that to let's say 50 centimeters. Now I'm going to go into my side view and plot out the path and in the text you'll see I've probably mentioned doing this a couple of ways. I'm just going to plot out the path in my side view to start with and then I'll go into one of the other views just to tweak that afterwards. So I'm just going to make the kind of rough shape that I want like that. Go into my main view up here into my, my 3D viewport. Now I've got one point selected which is the very end point and if you hit UI you can grow your selection. So I'm going to hit UI, 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 UI and once more just bring that out and then I'm going to control click on that point to deselect it. Drag to the side again and I'll just control click on these points just to get rid of them. Now there is a command for shrink selection, but if I choose that, it will uh, select. It will kind of shrink from both ends, and I want to keep the end point of the spline as the one which is going to be kind of furthest over to the side, like so. Now, if I just rotate around here, you can just see how that's kind of coiled off to that side. Uh, I might take this one point here and just drift that across, just to bring in some balance there. Okay, so we've got our two points, our two paths, and now we just want to add a sweep nerbs to the scene, and that lives under the nerbs drop down here. We want a sweep nerbs, and our two splines here need to go as children under the sweep nerbs with the circle above, so the path goes underneath the profile, like so. And now you can see we've got our shape, and it's not quite what we want, but you know, it's getting there, it's not too far off. Uh, I just want to taper it so that over time it will just kind of narrow towards the end. Um, and to do that I'm going to select the sweet nerves. And you can see in the details tab down here we've got scale and rotation. And a little graph for each one. I want to play with the scale one. So I'm going to right click in the window and choose down here the option show in separate window. So now I've got that graph here and it just gives me a bit more room to manoeuvre. And I'm going to take the end point and I'm going to drag that right down to very nearly the bottom just so it kind of thins the shape out. Now we've got a slightly kind of, um, it's kind of almost like an easy ease curve here. So I'm going to just take the handle and I'm going to pop that back the other way so it tapers more horn like. So this is kind of a, a quick descent towards the end, but I'm going to add an extra point by holding down control and just clicking there and I'm going to drag that down just a little to even that shape out. I'm going to take that handle and then you can adjust the interaction between the two points and do this to you know kind of how you want it to look. Now the fact that you can swing this down and then back over again does mean that you can create something that gets thinner and then thicker again which is quite useful. Um, I'm not sure it's particularly appropriate for this example, so I'm going to swing it round to, let's say, about there, and then we get quite fast fall off towards the end of the horn, and it thins quite dramatically just at the end, and I'm quite pleased with that. So that's that part done. Um, so this is actually looking pretty good. We've actually got our shape all done. All we need to do now is animate it. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the timeline. I'm going to choose my sweep nerves. And all I have to do is in the end growth here, have it set to zero or whatever point you want. Uh, so I'll choose zero so it's just not there. And then I'm going to go to the point where I want it to be fully grown, which can be, let's say, two seconds in. And then you can either type in or drag on the arrows. And you can see that the, um, the keyframe point there has gone yellow to say that there, there's animation on this track but there's no keyframe here um, but you've made a change so I'm going to control click to add a keyframe there and you'll see now 
the animation in place. Now you can either hit F8 or you can hit the play button just to watch that go through. And that's all done. Now I did mention as well um, that you could animate the, uh, the the start growth so you could get to say here and then you could start animating the start growth as well and it's not so appropriate maybe for a tree but let's uh, let's do it and see how it looks so I'm going to control click for a keyframe there and I'm going to come to the end and start growth you can get to the end as well add another keyframe and now if we go back to the beginning we'll see a chunk of this as it kind of grows and then kind of tails off after its own growth like so okay so that's how I would deal with it that, or that's one way of dealing with this kind of an object there are other ways of dealing with other objects which we'll probably look at in a future Q&A because uh, they're quite interesting and useful tools to learn how to make but for now I've been Rob Redmond and I uh, hope this Q&A was useful for you I'll see you all again soon